Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Kate Boyd. I'm a professor of piano at Butler University in Indianapolis and I'm here to help you take your piano playing to the next level. When a student comes to work with me, we often spend our first months together working quite a bit on technique to help correct some habits and to improve their ability to get around the instrument with ease and fluency. I found that it's really common on all levels of piano playing for a pianist to have an area or several areas of weakness in piano technique. You probably also experience frustration about some aspect of your own technical limitations at the piano. I used to feel frustrated about this in my own playing. I would practice and work at the same passages over and over and not feel like they were getting better. I found that I could achieve basic mastery of a piece, but there always seemed to be a few spots that didn't improve no matter how much practice I did. And so in performances, I would get kind of stressed out as those spots approach and just hope for the best as I played them. But honestly, I never really felt like I understood how to fix them. My teachers did work with me on technique, but I didn't always know what they were getting at or why they were asking me to do something. Often people seemed to speak in metaphors and on a conceptual level, and I wasn't always sure if I was getting it. Different teachers also appeared to contradict each other too, which added to my confusion. As a result, for a long time, the idea of piano technique seemed somewhat vague and mysterious to me. But the thing about technique is that it can unlock all of the expressive things you wanna say and do at the piano. So it's really important to take the time to figure it out. Over the years, I've thought a lot about piano technique, both in my own playing and as a teacher, and by now I have some pretty concrete and specific things to say about it. The number one thing to keep in mind is that technique is something we work on in order to express our musical ideas. Good technique allows you to experience more ease at the piano, and it also frees you up to play fearlessly and with expression and emotional commitment. Technique is never about technique for its own sake. And the funny contradiction is the better your technique, the less you actually need to think about technique. Because if you're spending all your energy at the piano thinking about how to technically execute what you're playing, then you don't have any mental bandwidth left over to think about what you wanna say musically, which is actually the main point of playing music. And I'd also like to point out that while good technique can certainly be impressive, people don't leave a concert saying, wow, that pianist was amazing because they played all the correct notes and it was really fast, right? No, when you're wowed by a performance, it's because in addition to whatever technical skill the pianist displayed, there was something special they communicated that connected with you. And the pianist's technique is what allowed that to happen. So to repeat, technique is what enables communication. It's not the end goal, it's the medium through which connection can be accomplished. There are a few things that I repeat over and over to my students. I say them in nearly every lesson and in a lot of different contexts using many different words and analogies. I'm gonna call these my principles for technique. They're basically three things to keep in mind that will help you to play in a more healthy, comfortable way. These three principles are gonna come up repeatedly in the upcoming videos, and so what I wanna to do today is introduce them to you. And you know what? <laughs> because this is YouTube, I bought a letter board and I wrote down the three principles that I say to my students over and over. So we'll have them in front of us as we go through the next videos. So here goes. Let's talk through each of these. My first principle is don't isolate your fingers. So many bad habits that pianists have originate from trying to play with isolated fingers. That's not how our hands were designed. Can you think of any activity that requires you to poke at something with individual fingers while keeping your hand immobile? I can't. I can't think of one thing that requires this kind of motion. Our hands are made for grabbing, for catching, for pulling things, for manipulating objects. When we do this, our fingers work together, not in isolation from one another. So this is what isolated fingers look like at the piano. 
Doesn't that look awkward? I hate the way this feels. You can see that there's a lot of tension in each finger and it looks really unnatural. Instead of isolating each finger and trying to play each note individually by punching down from the hand, you want to think of the fingers as extensions of the mechanism that consists of the hand and the arm all the way up to the shoulder and working together, functioning in tandem with each other. We're going to cover this much more in the upcoming videos. Just for now, know that the principle to keep in mind is don't isolate your fingers. The second principle that I discuss at length, repeatedly, and over and over with my students is what I summarize in the phrase, take your fingers with you. This principle is really about opening and closing the hand. Look at what my hand looks like when I open my hand in front of me. You can do this too right now. When I hold my hand up and I extend all of my fingers, my hand very quickly gets tired. And actually, I'm going to count the number of seconds it takes for me to feel fatigue and discomfort. So here we go. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. I'm already getting tired. 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, yeah, I'm getting fatigued. 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000, 11, 1,000, 12, 1,000. Yeah, I'm really feeling a lot of discomfort and it kind of hurts a little bit. So, so yeah, that's really uncomfortable and now my hand is tired. I have to shake it out. And the thing is that if I have another technical thing, like if I'm in the middle of a piece and I've just done that, I've extended my hand for a period of time, my hand gets tired. And then if I want to do something hard right after that, I can't do it because my hand's too tired, but I can hold my hand up like this indefinitely. But here's the thing. When we play the piano, we often do need to open our hand. We need to play big chords. We need to play octaves. We need to play other large intervals and we need to travel large distances over the keyboard very quickly. So the principle of taking your fingers with you involves opening your hand when you need to, but then relaxing very quickly. And when necessary, moving to the new place on the keyboard and taking your whole hand and all your fingers with you. In short, we want to minimize the amount of time we keep the hand extended or open. We're going to keep coming back to this over the course of the series. The third principle is let go of the instrument. So many pianists try to make sound by punching all the way down to the bottom of the key and then sometimes even trying to go further than the bottom of the key, even though that's not even physically possible. So much of what we do at the piano needs to involve lifting off of the keys and letting go of the piano. Often we need to drop to the bottom of the key, but just as often we have to lift off of the instrument. I find that many, many students come to me with only half of this figured out. They're grabbing onto the instrument all the time, but they're not used to letting go. Letting go of the instrument is the idea that we don't have to drive the fingers all the way to the bottom of the keys for every note we play. We need to let go of the piano in order to maneuver around, which also helps us shape and play musically. So here's our letter board. I'm just going to put this here. Now about the upcoming videos in this series. In my work with collegiate and high school students, as well as adult amateur pianists, I found that there are recurring technical issues that keep coming up. I've noticed a pattern. My students come to me with similar technical problems that I address with each of them. And so in this series of videos, I'm going to talk about the top five technical things I work on with my students. Here's what I'm going to cover in the upcoming five videos. I'm going to start off the series by talking about hand position. Good hand position is essential and forms a foundation for everything that follows. After that, I'll talk about alignment of the fingers and the arm. This follows directly from hand position and it's important because this concept helps prevent injury and establishes the angle of approach of each finger as you play it. My third video is going to be about forearm rotation, which is a crucial foundational skill that I work on with most of my students when they first come to me. 
Then I'm going to talk about arm weight and weight transfer because this is a frequently misunderstood concept that lies at the heart of sound production. And in the final video, I'm going to talk about the wrist. We all need to have a flexible wrist and use our wrist to maneuver our hands around the keyboard and position our fingers correctly. The framework I'm going to explore in this series is representative of my approach. I'm not saying that this is the only way to address technique, and I'm certainly not saying that my way is superior to all other approaches. Every teacher will have their own way of thinking and speaking about technique. And what I'm doing in these videos is introducing my own approach that works for me and for my students based on my years of experience as a pianist and professor of piano. What I hope to offer here are some concrete thoughts and ideas that you can try at home and apply to your own playing. So be sure to watch all five videos in this series to learn about the top five technical issues I work on with my students. I'm really looking forward to talking these ideas through with you. Better yet, subscribe to my channel, The Piano Prof, so you don't miss a video. This is going to be especially helpful to me as I grow my channel. I'll see you in the next video and happy practicing.